Hey, Zern listeners, 90 Day Fiance. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. As I always say, everything that I say in relation to this show, in reaction to the show, is completely speculative based on very little information that the individuals deem to show us and the editors deem to show us. So just keep that in mind. Let's watch. All these issues, it's just a lot. She's still tracking your phone? Yeah, she still has it. I haven't, I haven't uh, taken that off yet. Are you going to take it off? Yeah, I mean, I told her that was the plan. It's a security blanket. Now she's yeah. here, it's not necessary. I don't think it's going to be an issue. Okay, I haven't been reacting or showing it on YouTube because I feel like there's not much to say. I mean, there's some things to say about this family, but I feel like it happens in real quick bursts, and I, I'm like, do I just post two minutes of videos on the on YouTube? But So I'll try to tell you what I've been thinking over the past couple of months. We know that the two of them have been through some difficult times as children, and we could assume that their relationship or the way things are working out between them and Thais is somehow wrapped up in that, in that for the older brother, John, he might have some sadness about losing family members and really depends on Patrick as a as an anchor. It also looks like John might suffer from some emotional issues and might, might be using alcohol to cover it up. He was drinking in the morning. That doesn't necessarily mean that he has a problem, but the way he was talking about drinking, it, it seemed like an issue. And who knows if that's a typical thing for him, but I don't know. Also, there was that scene where they were crying at the putt-putt golf course, and there seemed to be some real authentic pain and complicated feelings between the two of them. So the conclusion I would say is that John and Patrick have a very intense, close, painful, but dependent relationship for some very important reasons, for some justifiable reasons. So I think that's one of the landscapes. And John seems to be I don't know how to say this, but more dependent on Patrick than Patrick is dependent on John, or Patrick needs John to be dependent on him because Patrick also doesn't want to lose John. I don't know. But we could imagine the two of them really needing each other when they were younger and having any kind of incursion on that relationship being a real threat in the past. And now we have a, another woman bringing into the relationship and really threatening their closeness. And there's a chance that for John, he doesn't believe that with he he might believe that without Patrick he'll have no one. He might have tried to have other friends, other romantic relationships, and have it not go well. So for him to lose Patrick could be to lose the last chance of a relationship he could possibly have. And the way he goes about it, of course, is in this dysfunctional way, which is to control, put down, manipulate. I don't know if I showed this, but he was being pretty. Uh, racist or xenophobic last week when he was telling her that that you're going to eat this steak that's on the ground because you're from Brazil and you deal with poverty and lack of food over there. And so you, if anyone should realize the importance of eating food, even if I put it on the ground, it should be you. You know, it's, 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 it was a really ugly statement that he was saying. Essentially, it's just like you're from another country and you deserve to eat food off the ground or food on the ground is at your level kind of a thing. And so it was pretty ugly and Thais seemed to roll with it pretty well. They just moved into a new house and Thais was saying, well, this kind of sucks because John's upstairs in the main part of the house and now we're kind of stuck down here and I wasn't hoping to move in with John because I, I got the impression that for Thais, at least she wasn't in the impression that when they move, it's going to be their new house, they're going to be there for a while, that you want to start on the right foot and if John comes with, then that means John will stay because it's harder to kick someone out than to not have them move in with you, right? So I'm guessing Thais was hoping, well, this will be our transition away from John. It'll be kind of a natural trans transition where we're all going in separate ways instead of John coming with us and then at some later date we have to kick him out and what if he doesn't go? And Patrick seems to be pretty ambivalent about that whole thing anyway. he, I, I don't think he actually wants to not live with John. I think he placates Thais. And there seems to be some level of I don't know, dismissiveness that Patrick will exhibit towards Thais. Anyway, 
So now they're talking about location services, and there's a lot of different practices around that. If you would have asked me 10 years ago about sharing location services with my wife, I'd be like, well, that's kind of an invasion of privacy, even though I didn't have anything to hide. But I think over time, it just became more and more culturally normal and convenient. It's sort of like how in the beginning, people didn't want you know, trackers to be on their phone, location services. They, they didn't want Yelp or Google to know where, so they're like, oh, I'm gonna turn all that stuff up. Eventually it just kind of sneaks into your life and then you just get used to it and for better, for worse. But anyway, so with Stacy, my wife, it has become very, I can't remember when we switched over to sharing locations, but it's been extremely convenient. I mean, there are times when I'm like, where is she? And <laughs> I thought she was home and cause I'll be doing content stuff and with my door closed and I'll go looking around and say, where'd she go? And so it's really easy to go, oh, okay, she's at the store. You know, it, I don't have to bother her and she doesn't have to bother me in a sim similar situation. And if you're ever kind of worried about your partner, you can quickly figure out where they're at. So it's it's a very convenient thing. And But you can imagine for some people, they don't want that level of, of I don't know, uh, invasion or something. And it sounds like Patrick is kind of on the fence about that. John wants him to stop sharing location with Thais, which you just have to wonder why John would even care. Like, you know, I don't care if my friends or my brothers share their location with their spouses. Why would I care about that? So it seems like John might actually want the two of them to have some issues or, you know, we could imagine that there might be some, some motivation there. Have I talked about this couple at all? I, th I don't think I've ever talked about them actually. So let me go back to the very beginning or have I, anyway, with Patrick, I mean, I know I've thought about him and maybe talked a little bit about, I don't know if I've published anything, but with Patrick, he went through a pretty difficult time where he was an Olympic athlete and had been caught a couple times using enhancing substances. This eliminated him from competition and he, he entered a pretty deep depression or it was really rough for him. And this uh, alerts us, I believe, and I've seen a lot of exposés on this sort of thing that at top level a uh, competition, it's almost universal that people are using enhancing drugs and performance enhancing drugs of some kind. And there's a, if you know all the ins and outs of it, there's a pretty fine line, or there's a fuzzy zone, I should say, between regular enhancing substances like protein shakes or getting lots of vitamin D or what, I don't know, <laughs> you know, a multivitamin, for example, amino acid, this kind of, you know, there are things that are considered okay to ingest or take or even inject, you know, especially if you have like a medication that you need, then that's considered to be okay and legal. And then there's things that are in this middle zone and then there are things that are obviously performance enhancing. And there's a, so there's a lot of things in the middle zone that a lot of people are doing anyway. So this is a pretty slippery slope where someone says, hey, you know, you should try this thing out. And it's like, oh, that, that really works. I didn't know that thing, you know? And then someone's like, you know, if you do this, and because the difference between a gold medal or any medal at all and, uh, and not winning anything means that you probably have to do something, you know, inject something. And I don't want to accuse everyone, but in particular sports, particularly weightlifting, which is what he was in, I'm just going to take a guess and say that there is a lot of that. And those who win just manage not to get caught or they only do it during certain months when they're not being monitored or who knows. I am not surprised. And he got caught because I know some people were saying like he's a criminal jerk face and I don't know, you know, I'm not in the Olympic weightlifting world, but so maybe I'm completely wrong about all that, but I'm, I'm speaking more generally about sports that require muscle mass in general, or, you know, red blood cell count, like in bis bicycling, think, you know, Lance Armstrong, this kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, bummer that it happened to him and, and it was probably a slippery slope for him. And then, so what does that say about him? I don't know. Him and Ty seem really good together. I don't know, let's continue watching. I got an idea, you got hopefully. A, yeah, you got a man up, buddy. You got a man up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ugh, man up. 
Uh, remember that therapist that we saw on the show? Who Whose therapist was that? I forget. Was it Colt and Vanessa or something? The therapist had man up or something behind them. So if you're a therapist and you're thinking about your office, one of the most important pieces of real estate is behind your head because as a client, you'll be looking at your therapist's head, obviously, but then occasionally you will look away from their head and at things behind them and around them. And whatever's back there is probably strategically placed. And he had this sign that said man up, which is a sexist, misogynistic notion. Now, could one use it in a a benevolent or harmless manner? Perhaps, but the foundation and the usage is almost always based in some level of toxic masculinity. And we, I think, are seeing an example of this right now. So the brother clearly wants the, his, his, you know, John clearly wants Patrick to not have sharing of location. Why it would matter to John, who cares, who knows, but probably because he either wants them to break up or he just wants Patrick to himself. And he thinks that if Patrick has location service with Thais, that ties him closer. So anything that gets him closer to him, because I think John is really quite desperate, then he is motivated to try to motivate. And so he'll utilize whatever he can. Apparently, the two of them have a lot of toxic masculinity notions between them. And so he knows that he can poke at that and basically say, if you don't draw this boundary with Thais, you are not a man. I mean, just think about that. That's what man up means. Because if anyone ever, anytime anyone ever says man up, you say, okay, well, what if I don't do that? Am I womaning up? <laughs> Like, what's the opposite of man up, right? I mean, it's obvious. You're, you're saying you're not a real man unless you do this, which is ridiculous. One. Two, who cares about someone else's weird vision of what a man should be? Every man and everyone of every gender gets to define what that means to them. So, and the other message here is a very common toxic masculine message, a real patriarchal sexist message of, as a man, you must gain control over your woman. You cannot be under control. You cannot be submissive. You can't be pee-whipped. All, there's so much language around that, and I've heard it all, believe me. So he is giving a clear message around that, and they probably know that amongst themselves because they've probably participated in that backwards and forwards for, for many, many years. In order to be a real man and not a woman, you have to be dominant. You have to be in control. She needs to know her place. She cannot have control over you. She cannot have any kind of dominance over you. And her knowing where you are is an indication of dominance, which means you are not a man, so you need to man up. If someone doesn't want to share their location with their partner and happens to identify as a man, that's fine, but that has nothing to do with gender or control or dominance. It's just your own preference. Just you can have that preference. It doesn't have to be couched within you know, centuries of oppression of women and the massive insecurity of men. I mean, that's what it's based on, you understand? Like the man up phrase and the messages and the foundation around that and the obsession with being dominant over women is because men are insecure. They're afraid and they're weak. That's why they're concerned with it. So if you want to be strong, you don't give a crap about that. God, it just... I've lived with it my whole life. And as a man, people will come at me. What I mean, not in my current life, because I have probably excised all that from my life. But I don't know. Occasionally, stuff like that will happen. It's rare. And to be put in a position where I somehow have to defend my manhood, you know, it's, it's aggravating. Anyway, so. But Patrick's going along with it. And what will happen is Patrick will go to Thais and probably say, I don't want to share my location and probably say it in a way that comes across as dominant and lack of caring. I don't know. Who knows? Patrick seems like a good enough guy. So who knows? But and then where are you as a man? You manned up. Great. Now your relationship sucks. And and just and again, <laughs> the, if the goal is to be dominant, is that really what you want, fellas? Do you really want to be someone's father? Is that what you're looking for in life? Do you want that responsibility? Or do you want a partner who meets you and cares about you and you care about them? And 
they don't feel like they have to obey you and don't wait for you to approve. They just, you know, they live their life. It's like you want a partner, a companion. You don't want someone to walk three steps behind you like certain pres. Anyway. Meu Deus, amor. A cell phone for America now. But, but what? Vou parar, você tem meu local de região. Okay? Yeah, that's got to feel pretty crappy that you now are faced, if you're Thais, with this realization like, wait, so all these gifts were to try to manipulate me to agree to not share location anymore. What that tells Thais in this moment is this was like a, a machination. This was something that you planned in advance to trick me as a bait and switch. That is manipulative. You were lying by omission by giving me this gift in the first place. It's a massive trust violation and just awful. And it's another toxic masculine thing to do of just like, well, you know, women, you got to give them gifts and then they'll do anything because they're always wanting stuff like clothes. And so, you know, shopping women, you know, if you're old like me, you can remember a time when comics, that was like half their jokes was just about how much their wives would shop all the time. You know, take my wife, please. You know, that kind of thing. That would feel pretty awful. And why wouldn't you just, if you wanted to give her gifts, fine, but why would, you know, you just pause that and then later on say, so could we talk about the location thing a little bit? Because this is how I, it, I kind of feel about it. And, you know, is that okay? Because what's it to him? If he shares, I think they're always together. <laughs> I don't think it has any practical value in terms of being able to not have location source. Like what, what benefit does it gain? You know, if, if you're into your privacy, fine, but it, it certainly isn't urgent, right? So anyway, but from her perspective, this is pretty crappy. And for y'all out there, I, I hope you don't do stuff like this. Just be straightforward. Always think, when I reveal to my partner the thing I'm wanting to get out, how is it going to feel to them that I didn't tell them earlier? This is something that I'm trying to think of a more mundane example. Let's say you mess up with the kids one day. You drop one of the kids on their head or I don't know, something. And you're like, oh, and you know that your partner would want to know about that. And so... You wait like a week, and then while you're having a couple of drinks at dinner, you're just like, oh, so I wanted to tell you that, you know, there was this moment where I dropped one of the kids on their head, and it's, it's okay, it's okay now. Now, maybe your partner won't care, but there's a chance that they'll say, wait, so you've known for seven days, and you didn't tell me? What else have you not? It's very important to understand how that comes across to someone else. Because in that moment, you've lied by omission for a week. And just telling yourself, well, I'll tell them eventually. Okay, but why not now? You're basically saying, I will lie by omission for seven days because I don't want to face it right now. And I'll tell them in seven days. You're not saying, I'll tell them, end of story. You're saying, I will lie by omission for every moment that I am with my partner for the next seven days until I tell them. That's what you're saying when you're, I mean, it depends on the situation, but that's where she's at right now and that's why she has that face. Você foi bem espertinho, né? Me deu um telefone novo para desligar a localização do outro telefone. Hmm, smart you. I wanted to give you a present and I don't want you to have my location anymore, so hmm. Hmm. I can have two motives to do that. Yeah, so she's calling him out on it, but I think their relationship is strong enough to withstand this, though, I think. They seem to have a pretty good bond, and she seems real level-headed and spontaneous and not overreactive. So, and he's not particularly problematic, but yeah, okay. I wanted to give you a gift, and I wanted to turn off location services. Okay, well, why did you do it right then? I mean, literally, as she's excited about the phone, you're like, I want to turn off. It, it, it's clear that you did it because you wanted to turn off the location services. Uh, I'll stay at this. Well, then don't take the phone. <sighs> so more dominance. Like, 
the message here. I don't know if he means it this way, but I, if I were her, that sounds like, so if I complain, you're not going to buy me things anymore. Or because you bought me something, I have to stop complaining. I don't have any rights because you bought me something. It's that kind of thinking, which of course is shared by, to some extent, all men. But it's just a matter of whether the man recognizes it and gets rid of it or doesn't act on it. We've all, as men, been injected with that notion. It's just a matter of what, what you want to do with it. Look all the time, your location. I know, but it's so taking me more to anxiety and more. It feels bad when, you know, I'm with somebody and they're, you know, the love of my life and they don't trust me. Okay, so I could see that. I'm glad that he said, so he says a lot of anxiety. That's what I was saying earlier. It's like, just say how it feels. I didn't think this is how he felt about it, but it makes sense that he's saying that I want you to trust me. And it gives me a lot of anxiety to think that whenever I'm not with you, you're in this constant state of worrying about me and uh, if I'm gonna cheat on you, or I guess is what they're talking about, and that you need to know where I'm at at all times. Okay, but if she doesn't trust you, then isn't there a better way to get there other than saying you will no longer be able to check? You know, the way to help someone to trust you is to help them to trust you, not to withhold uh, ways in which they can trust you. Do you know what I mean? But it's okay. He, he can say that. Yes, I, I just don't want that invasion of my private privacy. Okay, he said how he feels. All right, well, that does it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.